The Blue Nile flows through Ethiopia before joining the White Nile and passing through Sudan and Egypt. Ethiopia has built the massive $5 billion Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, hydroelectric project on the river. While the dam promises to improve life for Ethiopians through increased electricity, Egypt and Sudan worry it could severely reduce water flows. Over 60% of Ethiopian homes lack electricity, hindering daily life and the economy. The GERD could jumpstart more industry to transform Ethiopia. However, Egypt and Sudan depend completely on consistent Nile River flows. They fear drought and hardship if flows drop 25% or more after the dam is built. With elevated tensions around water sharing, conflict threatens regional stability. Ethiopia is charging full speed on the GERD regardless. But negotiations are urgent for a binding treaty governing Nile flows. If agreement isn't reached, Ethiopia's giant dam could trigger unprecedented upheaval along the world's longest river basin, or catalyze cooperation between nations sharing critical water resources. At a Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam event, Prime Minister Abi Ahmed boldly hails the massive hydroelectric project as Africa's largest ever that shall usher in a new era of glory for Ethiopia. He promises citizens that their current sacrifices without electricity will give way to bountiful national advancement upon the dam's completion. With more jobs, widespread rural electrification, rapid industrialization, and regional integration, Abi paints a vision of a thriving, revitalized Ethiopia rising like the morning sun thanks to the transformative power harnessed from the Nile River waters behind the GERD Megadam. However, far from eliciting universal excitement in the region, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam instead provokes visible worry amongst the people and governments of Sudan and Egypt downstream. These nations point to an existential dependency on full flow from the Nile for their economic vitality and providing sustenance to booming populations. With one of the world's fastest growing populations, nearing 120 million citizens, leaders in Egypt watch with unease as the GERD moves closer to fulfillment. Images emerge showing the lifeblood the Nile provides people in Egypt and Sudan through its annual floods that fertilize agriculture and provide reliable transportation routes. Any disruption to the quantity and timing of Nile waters reaching them elicits profound threats to civilian activities and whole industries connected intimately to the Great River's uninterrupted flow. Citizens in Sudan and Egypt most impacted by potential Nile flow shifts make their objections clearly heard. Protests erupt on streets from Khartoum to Cairo, decrying the GERD's threat to their livelihoods. Water is life, and no Nile, no future, read desperate signs in hands raised by the crowds numbering over 1,000 in Egypt's capital. Speaking passionately, one student protest leader exclaims, the Grand Renaissance Dam could be our end. Our families have relied on consistent Nile waters since the age of pharaohs, but now greedy Ethiopia wants to deny us this birthright and hoard the Blue Nile for itself. Egypt could turn into a desert wasteland if Ethiopia dams the Nile. We must speak out against this injustice. Anger flares amongst Egyptian citizens at being denied their fair share of resources, soon to be commanded by Ethiopia's new structure. With climate change impacts like drought already draining available water, project models suggest the giant dam could severely curtail Nile water flows downstream by 25% immediately and up to 60% over time. Governments get involved as stability fears mount. As Egyptian public opposition to the GERD escalates, government officials hold emergency meetings to discuss responses before the dam becomes fully operational. The Water Resources Minister gravely warns that once reservoir filling begins, the dam could severely choke off Egypt's Nile access, risking massive drought, economic ruin, and humanitarian disaster for millions. With international appeals unsuccessful at securing Ethiopian compromise on minimum Nile outflows, Egypt's leaders greenlight military contingency planning as a last resort. If all diplomatic efforts fail to protect Egypt's water security, direct attacks to take out the GERD blocking their lifeline remain on the table. Meanwhile, upriver, amidst the rising downstream pressure, Ethiopia charges ahead with GERD's construction, refusing to pump the brakes. The government insists on its right to provide electricity for its people, regardless of neighbors' objections. Ethiopia's Minister of Water reflects by the advancing megadam. Some countries talk of unfairness and even violence regarding our Renaissance Dam. 
but Ethiopia cannot wait any longer for our chance to rise by harnessing the Nile's hydropower potential. The GERD will propel our development through clean energy access and exports that benefit the whole region. Defiantly, the minister concludes her speech by affirming, no force on earth can or should stop Ethiopia from this righteous path. Then with the pull of a lever, the giant turbines within the concrete colossus of the GERD roar to life. The first phase of testing brings electricity to remote villages nearby that have known no power previously, eliciting joy and relief at their arrival into a more modern era. Yet the water costs of this achievement are instantly measurable, as data screens reveal the Nile's flows dropping consistently over 20% since the GERD's eight turbines began operations. For Egypt and Sudan, an emerging nightmare scenario gestates along with Ethiopia's realization of their bright developmental vision. As the massive reservoir behind the GERD continues filling over the years following inauguration, associated impacts accrue downstream. Images show once lush farmland in rural Egypt dried up without sufficient irrigation from the weaker Nile floods. Farmers lament their dying crop yields which previously fed many mouths. Growing numbers of climate change refugees emerge as families flock from the struggling Nile Delta, seeking new livelihoods. In Sudan as well, Lake Nubia suffers record low water levels from the decreased Nile outflows, decimating regional fishing industries as catches shrink. The dam offers Ethiopians hopeful talk of electrification and modernization. But downstream, its presence still represents a theft of precious water required for survival by millions of Egyptians and Sudanese. Ethnic tensions simmer as well between the Arab-majority countries and Africa's rising hydro star Ethiopia. Anti-Ethiopian protests intensify in Khartoum, with Egypt pledging military support to Sudan against Ethiopia's interests. Regional stability deteriorates over scarce Nile access as GERD operations ramp up. Egypt's president stresses behind closed doors that open war against Ethiopia may soon be unavoidable if their monopoly of Nile waters persists by force. What comes next for the Nile River Basin? International observers take stock of the worsening relations around the Grand Renaissance Dam, wary of conflicts ahead. There is still no binding treaty between the three feuding neighbors governing how much Nile water Ethiopia can retain while staking its national development upon the river's harnessing at last. Water shortages, economic distress, instability, and mass displacement now grip Sudan and Egypt from the GERD's impacts filling what was once their uncontested Nile Basin territory. If agreement is not reached between leaders in Addis Ababa, Khartoum, and Cairo to share the dynamic flows of their cherished waterway, then many predict Ethiopia's giant dam could trigger unprecedented upheaval along the world's longest river basin. Future regional wars over water resources also represent scenarios the world dreads realizing as climate change multiplies more areas of environmental desperation globally in the 21st century. Though the GERD disputes seem intractable presently, reconciling competing needs along Africa's storied Nile still remains possible if all basin nations jointly steward this shared, life-giving river. With cooperation and compromise soon, President Abe's ambitious dam harnessing the Blue Nile can unfold sustainably, averting regional instability over conflicting water claims.